Hello and welcome to Toby's Sideshow of Skills Styrene. Today I'm going to be looking at the classic, the one that began it all, the Tom Daniels Beer Wagon. This 124 skill initially sold for $2 way back in 1967. Uh, and I bought it way back then and have bought it probably every decade since then. And it has been reissued just about every decade since the 1960s. Uh, one release was as the RC Cola Wagon. Otherwise, mostly it's been released as the Beer Wagon. I'm building this as part of the third annual Tom Daniel Tribute build. This is the second kit I'm entering into it. If you're a Tom Daniel fan, you really should uh, be thinking about joining in with the Tribute build. Or if you're looking for other kits in the Tribute build, uh, just type in Tom Daniel's Tribute build and they should show up on YouTube. It's hosted by Chris Cortell and Dirk Pitt from over at uh, Classic Plastic 101 CP. So if you're interested in there, go check them out on Facebook or also here on YouTube. The particular kit I'm building is one from 1986, so it's a 30-year-old kit. I did have a few problems with it, uh, mainly probably because it had been sitting on the uh, shelf for 30 years instead of being having glue stuck to it. In any case, uh, let's take a look at it. Uh, first, the side panel with the uh, information about the kit. One thing you'll notice here is that it is made and printed in the USA, and it is still back when uh, Monogram was at Morton Grove, Illinois, uh, even though it had already been purchased by Ravel by that time. And you'll notice that it was by Ravel later on when you see some other pictures of the kit. Here's the instruction sheet. Uh, main difference between now and 1967 is the addition of other languages on the uh, instruction sheet. Otherwise, it's pretty much straightforward, just like it was on the original kit. And it's a two-sided instruction sheet with instructions 1 and 2 here, and then 20 through 25 at the back, uh, on the back side, and then all the other steps in the middle on the reverse side of that sheet of paper. If you notice, each step is pretty much one item happening at a time. Like here you have one of the uh, beer kegs being mounted, and then step 13 is the other beer keg being mounted. What I did not notice uh, originally was that it says that decal is not compatible with setting solution or solvents. I used a solvent when I was putting the decal on the dash over here, and I did not seem to have any problem. However, I had not read this yet, and I figured after reading this, if I tried it again, something would go bad. So when I put the uh, the decal on the, the sign here, I decided to leave the uh, ignore the solvent and just go with uh, warm water, and it worked out just fine. Okay, so let's take a 360 degree walk around of this whole kit. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, and now let's go ahead and look at some of the steps uh, along the way as I was building the uh, the uh, beer wagon. And here we have the engine. It's really a simple engine. It's just got the pipes, a little engine block, or the top half of the engine block, and then the uh, end of the uh, headers here. 
they are glued in place. Uh, the pipes were originally painted gloss white. They were then given a coat of uh, two or three coats of flat white to cover up the gloss white. The engine is supposed to be painted uh, orange. I ended up painting it to me as uh, medium green or light green. I think it's to me as light green. And uh, I like that color better than the orange. I painted it orange in the past. Here we have the bottom, and here you notice it says Ravel 1967. Well, it's obviously not from 1967. It came out in 1986 by Ravel. And the engine is painted medium gray, or I'm sorry, the transmission is medium gray. The rear end is also medium gray. All the pans here are just, uh, to me, is uh, chrome silver. Same with the uh, drive shaft here and the axle here. And you see the trim around the engine block down here as the light green. Another coat of uh, flat black and this kind of blended in. This is brown so that it will fit in with the uh, flat bed. The seats were painted to me as uh, uh, medium gray and then the lines drawn in using a light green sharpie. Uh, I was thinking about doing it in black but I thought I would use the green lines for like piping or something on the seat and that would blend it in with the uh, engine components. And we have the flower backrest or back headrests here also done in the medium gray and light green. The chain, well all of the chrome was given a, a coat of uh, flat uh, clear. This is something that the HPI guys talk about quite a bit about uh, doling down the chrome and so I decided I would try it and uh, I actually do like doing it. I'm going to do it on a few more kits in the future. So now the instead of looking like that really bright chrome that is way too bright sometimes, it now looks more like a stainless steel and I decided I would just go ahead and paint the uh, chains on the uh, chain drive as, as long as I was doing all that and it was done with a whole red and then uh, a black wash and then some uh, chrome silver dry brushing. Here we have them in place. Another view of them. And then the front axle. The in space in between the springs here was colored in using a black sharpie. I still need to do a little touching up with some chrome silver to make the lines a little cleaner. And one of the things that annoyed me after I got it glued in place was the stupid line here. If I had thought about it a little bit more, uh, I would have uh, sanded this down a whole lot better because I knew I was going to end up uh, changing this from the dull chrome to a bright chrome in the future. But unfortunately, I did not putty it or anything, so I know it's going to show later. But that's thumbs the brakes. Sometimes you just... Uh, Probably shouldn't build things too late at night, and that's what happens when you do. Another view of the entire bottom. little touching up still needs to be done. We'll see if I ever get to that part. And here we have the wheels with the uh, now stainless steel uh, rims, and the back area has been uh, painted in lemon yellow, so... Uh, It'll give a little bit of a distinction between these, and you'll see these gaps better. And you actually do see it even after the kit is completely finished. And here we have the decals on the signs. Uh, like I said, I just applied them with warm water. They're a little thick, uh, and they did wrinkle up a little bit. I have a feeling that had more to do with the fact that the uh, decals are 30 years old, but Surprisingly, for 30-year-old decals, they went on really well, and uh, I'm very happy with them at the very end. Very little silvering. The uh, reason these beer mugs are shown here is because uh, the kit comes with three chrome beer mugs. One of them is on the shifter, and two of them sit on the bottom. I have never seen a chrome beer mug in all my time in Germany, and uh, so I did not want chrome beer mugs. And if you look closely at those beer mugs, you will see that there are scenes of castles or something on the beer mug. So I decided to go ahead and paint them and leave the lids chrome uh, or flat. And so that's what you have here. And I just went with various colors and, uh, and then just colored them in either using uh, paint or uh, ink markers. Another closer view. 
really don't care about how well they look because you're not going to see them very well once they're buried inside the uh, the uh, cab. The barrels were painted uh, using lemon yellow and whole red. I mixed it in different colors and just uh, slapped it on at first and then started streaking it and trying to get the barrels to look more like wood. And then first time using the Molotov liquid chrome, I used that uh, on the barrels for the uh, for the whatever you call them the bands on the barrels I also use them on the uh, headlights and on the tail lights uh, first time using uh, Molotov liquid chrome I'm uh, I think once my uh, skill level at using it gets better I'm going to be really happy with it much easier to use than bare metal foil another view and here we have me putting some weight on this uh, flatbed. Uh, the reason being is this was kind of warped. And I have a feeling that had more to do with the fact that it's a 30-year-old kit. And, you know, being in the basement with varying heat and everything, I think this warped a little bit. And so what I had to do is put glue on all of these crossbars and then add some weight so that all these crossbars are glued down into the frame otherwise this would have been slightly warped and these uh, cross beams would not have been resting on the the frame but a uh, couple bottles of paint did the trick and here we have the uh, the pipes and the engine as you can see down below the wiring on the engine has been colored in using a a uh, black sharpie and same thing with the uh, the holes in the uh, in the pipes. Close up view of that little keg on the inside, um, and it looks really nice. And you see down here the little mugs in place, and then also obviously there is the one on the shifter. We have it here. Still need to touch up a little bit on the uh, the steering wheel. So, but you can see the dull chrome here and then the gloss black trim around it. And here's the decals for the, uh, for the dash. I was really ticked off after I finished building this. I should have painted the floorboard down here, the light green or the, uh, the gray. By the time I had it all glued in place, it's like, man, how am I ever going to get that painted? So on the next kit, I'll remember to do that before I start building it all. Another view of the front. And here we have the tail light. If you notice, there's a black line around here that was done with the Sharpie. I've got to color it in a little bit better. This is with the uh, Tamiya Clear Red. Um, it uh, needs a second coat. Once that's done, it'll be looking a whole lot nicer and it'll be nice and accented away from the rest of the uh, dull chrome. And this is an aftermarket 1927 decal. And here we have the front headlight, and you see this is one coat with the Molotov chrome. I'll probably put a second coat on it. And then you see the black line around it so that you can see it a little bit better. Whole red for the, uh, the handle on the crankshaft. And a nice view of the cab. Side view, and if you notice, the nice shiny chrome for the, uh, the beer keg uh, fuel tank. And now you can see a little bit of the chrome flaking on the uh, on the chain drive. Reverse side, you can see the yellow inside the wheels. And if you count there, you notice there are eight barrels there. There's only seven that come with the kit. I probably have another 20 or 30 beer barrels because of all the past beer wagons that I've built. So I've got plenty of beer barrels. I might do something even more exotic with beer barrels in the future. And here we have a view of the bottom. Notice it's held, held up a little bit. And if you notice, the tires have all been flattened uh, using sandpaper to get the uh, get it all nicely sanded down and evened up. And so a quick view of the finished kit.
You know, I never bothered to mention all the painting on the, the deck here. This is done with a whole red, and then it was streaked with yellow, and then another wash of whole red over that. And then finally, it got about three or four coats of, uh, to me, a clear yellow, so it's a nice high gloss bed. More glossy than the uh, the beer barrels, which have only gotten one coat of uh, to me a clear yellow on them. And I believe there we go. And now her new home, next to the root beer baron and the hangman, on a shelf. And so I finally got another beer wagon back into my collection. I haven't had one in there for about 20 years now so I'm very happy to finally get another beer wagon built okay and that sums it up if you haven't joined the uh, Tom Daniel tribute build I would strongly suggest you do so if you're a Tom Daniel fan if nothing else uh, take a look on YouTube to see all the other Tom Daniel kits out there a lot of great kits out there and a lot of great builders out there with much better skill than I have and you'll see some really interesting designs that people have done. Okay, as always, comments are welcome and insults are cheerfully ignored. Thanks for visiting Toby's Sideshow of Skills Tyrene. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe and tell your friends. Have a great day.